Hello people and welcome to the second instalment of the Insights series on Wavy Dynamics. This one was inspired by recent posts I shared on our Instagram and LinkedIn actually. And I had a, a comment from a member of our community, Slipstream TV, who actually make their own uh, bike related videos and Instagram content. And he said, you really should make a quick video out of this. So here's my shot of that. So today we're going to talk about gurney flaps. And gurney flaps were actually a device initially used in Formula 1, I believe, on the trailing edge of aerofoils to increase their aerodynamic performance. And what they are is just a simple perpendicular flap, which is located at the backside of the aerofoil. And primarily they're there to increase the lift coefficient, which obviously increases downforce. But this is going to be a quick video explaining how they work, why they work, and what are the advantages and drawbacks. So by protruding above the boundary layer of flow over the upper high pressure surface of the airfoil, the gurney flap has the effect of slowing down the airflow. And as you'll probably know through the observation of Bernoulli principles, when you slow down the air to maintain continuity, you increase the pressure. Also, by changing the pressure coefficients around the trailing edge of the airfoil, they have the effect of reducing separation on the low pressure underside of the airfoil. So as you probably imagine, the result is ultimately an increase in damp force by increasing the lift coefficient, but the downside is that they're a relatively high drag way of doing this. So whether they're used or not generally depends on the application. So exploring that a little bit more, when should you use them, when shouldn't you use them? Perhaps a logical implementation of a gurney flap is when you don't really have a fine degree of adjustment of the angle of attack of a rear wing, or in a condition where the wing is close to stalling. And as for when not to use it, well, that kind of hinges around how well you can absorb the, the hit to drag that I discussed. So in cases where you're sensitive to top speed, perhaps a gurney flap isn't the right option and it's best to explore another route of increasing lift that doesn't come with such a drag penalty. And also in situations where you still have adjustability in the wing to play with, as that's generally going to be a more efficient way of increasing your aerodynamic performance. And as to the design of the gurney flap, well, through some of my own research and study and simulations, I've established that the best arrangement is to have the gurney flap perpendicular to the wing cord or perpendicular to the airflow, same thing. And also that the gurney flap should be around 0.05 or 5% of the overall cord length. So if you have a wing cord of 100 millimeters, your gurney flap would be around 5 millimeters. That's not a rule that's set in stone, but in my experience that provides the best trade-off between the increase in lift and the increase in drag. Gurney flaps are used in all levels of motorsport from F1 through to LMP or LMH, all the way down into GT cars. So next time you see them, look at the rear wing and see what you can understand about the gurney flap. Right, that's it for today. Quick one, as I said. Hope you enjoyed, be inspired. Until next time.